What's up, Broadway fans? It's Tuesday, February 18th, 2020. We're here in the heart of Times Square at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontor. I'm Caitlin Moynihan. And we're joined by Lindsay <gasps> Sullivan. Lindsay Sullivan, that's me. I don't know if I've ever sat here while you've been sitting there. I don't think so. I think this is our first live at five together. Very exciting. Wow. Exciting. Good to have you. Thank you. Also, great to have fantastic leading lady Jessica Phillips here. Yes. Of Dear Evan Hansen. Yes. I've known this lady for a long time. I'm excited she's here. She's the best. We're going to get to her, but first, today's top five. This innovative show is going to burn down the house once more. Look at her. With the She's song ready. <laughs> yes. So, we found out in a crazy turn of events that David Byrne's American Utopia, which was supposed to close on Sunday, not only is extending for a full week and not closing until February 21st, but it's coming back. Sure. She's coming back to Broadway. Uh, he's going to, the show um, is going to come back to the Hudson Theater on September 18th through January 17th, 2021. Once Sarah Jessica Parker's done with it. Yeah. That's true. This Plaza Suite is coming. They got it. The Broadricks, the Parkers, they're going to come, then they're going to go. And then they're going to come back. Sure. But yeah, this was crazy. It, you know, American Utopia, it, uh, it recouped its $4 million investment after only 10 weeks. Everybody seems to love it. They're going to make a movie of it. Spike Lee's directing it. Yeah. So it's going to be great. Great job, David Byrne. David Byrne. And Frozen fans won't be able to let this news go. Ooh. So, okay, first of all, tonight, welcome Ciara Renee, Mackenzie Kurtz, and Ryan McCartan. They're all starting performances tonight Ooh. in yes. Frozen. And they're playing Elsa, Anna, and Hans in, in that order. Uh, Ryan McCartan <laughs> would be fantastic, yes, Elsa, yes. but not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, so, but we also found out that they're incorporating changes. This happens sometimes yeah. in shows uh, because the national tour went out and they, re, you know, they tinkered with the show it a, little a little bit. bit. So tonight it's a slightly different show. The biggest news is that um, the reprise in the second act of For the First Time in Forever has been replaced by Elsa and Anna now singing I Can't Lose You. I like saying it like that. I can't lose you. You can't let it go. Um, <laughs> a song first seen on the tour. It was the new song added. Also, um, Kristoff, played by Noah J. Ricketts, mm -hmm. um, now has a reprise of What Do I Know About Love to better express his growing feelings of Anna, Love. which is sweet. Um, and also, um, Huga? Huga? Huga. Huga. The act two spa <laughs> number, the towels, oh, you know, that fun song. Um, it's a little shorter. Maybe like 20 seconds. I don't know. I don't have an actual number. Just a little shorter. Uh, and, but the biggest news, this might be big news, yes. Anna's new song True Love has been cut. I didn't realize it was cut In from the tour. I didn't know that either. I had no it's shocking, idea. but it says it on this piece of paper. Um, so the show is probably a little shorter. Yeah. And you know what? It's always good to get out a little earlier, get mm -hmm. the kids home. Uh, this, so these changes will also be seen in frozen London, Japan, Australia, Germany, everywhere, and in high schools years from now. <laughs> yeah. Frozen Junior. This, these is, this is now the new version of Frozen. So, but um, happy uh, opening night to the new stars. Let's get together and feel all right, London. Oh, yes. We love bio musicals and we love. Well, they're the thing. Where they're the thing. We love musicals where we use songs that we already know. And Maybe multiple actors playing a Three a at once. We <laughs> never know. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> but yeah, so the next, the newest uh, bio musical that's come, going to London is Get Up, Stand Up, Exclamation Point, the Bob Marley story. If that you didn't say the second part, I wouldn't know what Get Up, Stand Up meant. So thank no, you. No, yeah. The I'm glad they gave a clarifying second title to the first yeah. title yeah. but yeah so this brand new bio musical is going to be playing at the london's west end's lyric theater beginning february 6 2021 so not until next year which would be bob marley's 76th birthday wow. uh this musical features a book by olivier and tony winner lee hall oh, Ooh. and it. will be directed by olivier winner dominic cook oh, okay. so that's gonna be real good yeah. and arinze keen is a set to play bob marley so they already know who the title star is going to be seems like there's just going to be one person playing bob marley at least for the time being okay <laughs> and of course this is going to use some of bob marley's most popular and well-known songs including no woman no cry exodus three three little he loves three three little songbirds mm -hmm. loves that sure. and get up stand up of course which is the titular mm -hmm. number um and it's great this has a stamp of approval from bob marley's family so that's always nice when people of the family like what's happening uh, more casting and info to come but yeah where's the prince musical that's a really good Just question, Paul. Yes. That's it. Just to throw it out <laughs> there. 
one of Broadway's hottest hoofers is headed to the director's chair. Yes, yeah, so Manhattan Concert Productions is this new annual thing. And last night, I was lucky enough to see Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Noah Galvin, formerly of Dear Evan Hansen, uh, was so good. Thank you for filming the mega mix. Joseph, I did. I shot <laughs> a little you. video, and it actually got a lot of views I was like, of the mega mix, yeah, of him just you. dancing totally. and living his life. <laughs> Um, it was a really a spectacular production directed by Michael Arden. But yes. so every year when you go see it, they announce in like a flyer what they're doing oh, next year. It's like a fun surprise. The and they're doing the Civil War, the Frank Wildhorn, Gregory Boyd, Jack Murphy musical that didn't last very long on Broadway oh, on in the Broadway. late 90s. Um, but but really interestingly, Tony Yazbek is directing. Yeah. It's busy. So Tony Yazbek is uh, branching out. This is all happening on Valentine's Day 2021. <laughs> Because don't we want to think about the I Civil know. War? There's a lot of love in the Civil War musical. <laughs> There's some good love songs I remember. Um, and Tony Osbeck is, of course, starting March 12th in Flying Over Sunset. And he plays Cary Grant. Oh. And I can't wait to see that musical. So, so uh, yes. this is exciting. Yes. So this is news about another dancer. And all I can say in response to the title of the show is challenge accepted with those <laughs> fancy feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I any, love this show. Any news about Corbin Blue is good news. Yeah, in my but especially opinion. this musical. What's he doing? He's going to be in Catch Me If You Can <laughs> at so Arena good. Stage in Washington, D.C. And this is kicking off Arena Stage's upcoming season. Of course, we last saw Corbin Blue when he was in Kiss Me, Kate, when yes. he was tap dancing on the roof, just tapping all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you they know, they could he, throw that up, some, some of that into Catch Me If You I Can. I think they could easily could have him just tapping. Sure. But yeah, so he's going to be playing, um, you know, the main guy in. His name is Frank, Frank Abernal Abernal Jr. Thank you. I couldn't find him. Because I love this show. It was so good. <laughs> and who so played good. him on Broadway, Paul? Aaron Tveit. Yeah. Love it. And he deserved a Tony nomination he's or a Tony win. But. Hopefully he'll get one this year. Only facts coming from Paul Wontorek today. And this is going to play uh, run October 23rd to December 13th. So that's a good length of time for everybody to get down to Washington, D.C. This, of course, is the musical that's based on the film of the same name, created by Terrence McNally, Scott Whitman, and Mark Shaman. Mm -hmm. uh, you good know, score. it was nominated for how many Tony Awards? A lot. Four. Yep. In 2011. Yep. Um, and only four? Only four. That's not right. Not enough. No, and right. it's going to be directed by the Arena Stage Artistic Director, Molly Smith. So fun new direction happening over there. I like you did hands for that. New. Yay. <laughs> I, okay. couldn't do my, I couldn't do my hands when I first said hello. Um, <laughs> this uh, uh, Arena Stage also announced the rest of its season. It's going to include a new musical about abolitionist Frederick Douglass by the Grammy-winning songwriter Marcus Hummin and Charles Randolph Wright called American Prophet colon Frederick Douglass in his own words. You know I love punctuation. We I love, I know. That out. It's not a semicolon. Know, not a semicolon. So also on the site, you know, we do these uh, clubbroadway.com videos. In fact, today's guest, Jessica Phillips, did one of yes, the so small, so big, so touching, you know, that Sobbing. song, so good, so good, check it out. But Alexander Sosha <laughs> came in and did Wherever He Ain't from Mac and Mabel. <laughs> Can do it all. Big belty song, the opposite Epic. of what Jessica did. <laughs> um, and what else? We have photos oh, we of have the new of Frozen photos. stars on the site. We have a great shot of the stars of American Buffalo, which Darren yes, includes Chris. Darren Chris. Um, <laughs> Harry Townsend's Last Stand had a hundred performances at a cake. They had a great cake. Love a sure. Cake. Moulin and, Rouge. Oh my God! So <gasps> did you know this is really funny because Tony <laughs> season has officially started. I feel like this morning. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because everyone was kind of saying like Moulin Rouge hasn't been doing much. Well, they were no. on Good Morning America today, live. Live. And did, like, kind of the first they five did, minutes yeah, of the they show, did kind of, right? way more than I thought they were yeah, going to do. Yeah, they did. It's fantastic. So, so Tony good. Grace is on for yes. Best Musical. And hey, Patty Murin oh. and Colin Donnell are having a baby girl. Yes, yeah, so cute. So if you were wondering what Patty Murin is doing next, she just finished Frozen on Sunday. That. Little baby. That. That's <laughs> and, big, just, and that's a big thing. And I just want to plug one thing, y'all. If you think you're Broadway's biggest fan. Oh right, so you have to submit Broadway's biggest fan. Check it out. What's the URL? It's on the Broadway. site. Broadway.com/slash biggest, biggest fan. fan. Thank yeah. you. You have to make a video under 60 seconds proving why you're the biggest fan. Be creative. Be campy. Be emotional. Whatever. <laughs> Show us your playbills. Everyone does that. But do other <laughs> things too. Um, and then somebody's gonna pick, and you're gonna win a trip win to New lots York. Of prizes. And you get tickets to like all the hot shows. Yes. 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 And you get to go to the Broadway.com and Choice Awards and all that stuff. Anyway, so, enter. Uh, so check that out. But it's time yes. for Jessica to take your spot. So thank you, Kate. Fine by me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lindsay, tell everyone about today's guest. I would be obsessed with doing that. Jessica Phillips is currently playing Heidi Hansen in Dear Evan Hansen, of course, on Broadway. Her previous Great White Way credits include Next to Normal, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, Leap of Faith, and The Scarlet Pimpernel. You may have seen her on screen in Law & Order SVU. You can follow her on social at 
Fullips on Broadway. That's F-U-L-L-I-P-S-O-N-B-W-A-Y. And leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Jessica and Paul. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you, Lindsay. Of two. Um, <laughs> Hey Jessica, first of all, let's let me just get this out of the way. Full yeah. lips, I do like following full lips on Broadway. Yeah. Um, it's you didn't have to explain how to pronounce your last name. Phillips is a pretty easy name to yeah. say. But what's just what, what's the history here? No, no. Lips. So you know, when I was a kid, um, and uh, I was on the schoolyard being bullied, as I think most of us have yep. from time to time, a lot of people would say, a lot of the other girls would say. Well, you got fat lips. You got oh, big lips. And um, I was ashamed of that for a long time. Oh my gosh. Until I wasn't. Because no. now people pay a lot of money for I filler to say, get those lips. I was going to say. These like, are all everybody. mine, completely natural. I'm very proud of them. Isn't anyway, it amazing it, the things that you could have known at I know, that time that would just make life so much easier? Yeah, I know. It's nuts. But at the time, it really it was impactful in the way yeah. that... Uh, you know, a, a lot of those hurtful words are yeah. when we're kids, which is, I think, a great segue into Dear Evan Hansen. But Look at you. You really, really brought it there in a really Just elegant way right from my there. random first question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Heidi. We all yeah. love Heidi. We all love, you know, a working class mom trying to get it together, right? I mean, yeah. like, this is, like, such a great character. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, you first did it on the road. Yeah, I did the first right? national. So let's talk about, so how long have you now been in Dear Evan Hansen land? I did 12 months uh, in the first national, and okay. then I, I took a 10-week hiatus, and then I came into the Broadway company in November. Cool. So I'm, I'm so into, you're I'm in. like a year and a half -ish Yeah, yeah. With rehearsals yeah, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And how's it going? It's great. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it, it's, you know, there's, there's always something happening over at the Music Box, yes. and it's pretty exciting. You know, we've got a new star, Jordan I know. Fisher. I Jordan who Fisher, is, who's fantastic. Is and like, such a nice kid. If I could have heart emojis on top of my eyes, <laughs> yeah. you would see those right now, because he's just, he is a, he's a dream boat. You know, he's, a, he's, he's so kind, he's so generous, yeah. and he's so wonderful uh -huh. in the part. And he's got this smile that, like, makes the, the ladies drop down on the sidewalk when he mm -hmm. walks outside so mm -hmm. i first met him on a golf cart um, what oh. yep on the on the set of grease live ah and and i had a golf cart tour of the set and he was he was in the golf oh, cart. oh that's cute but he's done so many amazing things yeah, you know he really then he has. was in hamilton and yeah. didn't he win like dancing with the stars or something yes didn't okay. like, yeah. some, right? like some reality <laughs> he, yeah and, and and like legit broadway yeah. star well and not to mention breaking netflix Right, yep. because oh, he did right. the, the Netflix for all the now, girls, uh, all the boys, all, all the, the boys boys. I've loved before, <laughs> and then the, the second one, which just yes, dropped. Yes, yes, right. So it's amazing. Yeah, and he's a yeah. nice guy. He's a great guy, so it's easy and to he's be. very generous, both off stage and on. So yeah, and it's it's interesting because um, the show is beautifully written, yeah. and that is is pointed up every time we get a, a new actor into any of the eight mm -hmm. roles, but but into this one in particular, because um, he just brings out different colors mm -hmm. in, in Evan, yeah. and he brings out different things in all of the other characters. Mm -hmm. So while it's obviously the same show, we haven't changed a thing, um, it feels slightly new and different and fresh with him in it because of the, you know, the particular nuance that he he brings to it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really it's it's been really exciting to have him come in and to go to go through that uh, you know that scene work with him and to yeah. sort of find our relationship and I, I, and everybody on stage feels feels the same way. So how many Evans have you um, made cry on that sofa in your time in the show? Because, I mean, there, there, there's been a... To all the sons I've loved before. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, I had um, obviously two on the road, plus yeah. our really amazing understudies. Right. Um, and I was able, I was fortunate enough to come in when Andrew was, was still in right. our show. So yeah. um, that's fantastic. I've yep. got... Um, uh, uh, Zach in the role uh, during matinees and mm. I don't even know I can't keep yeah, count but lot. like bec I, I get a chance to work with all of them because yeah. mm. at some point the understudies have an opportunity sure. to come in yeah. and take the take the the role on and that's really great for everybody because yeah. especially the audience because uh -huh. it's there's so much uh, energy behind that particular performance mm -hmm. and the you know it's it's uh, palpable. Mm -hmm. You're a mom in real yeah. life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, talk about your, your family life. Yeah, I have two 
uh, teenage boys. I can't believe, and, and one's in college? One's in college, one's a freshman what? in college. How'd that happen? I know, I <laughs> asked myself the same thing. Um, Amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's 19, and I have a 16-year-old uh, junior in high school. So, so does it, uh, I'm sure everyone asked you this, and then you played moms before, but mm-hmm. is it all sort of elevated when you're dealing with, I mean, in this show, it really, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, kids are really going to latch onto this show. But yeah. what, I, what I learned over time is how much parents, and I'm sure on yes. the road you really saw that, um, not being a parent myself, that wasn't my immediate yeah. place to go, but I, I really had really deep conversations with, with parents yeah. about this show. Yeah. Yeah. That was a remarkable and truly unexpected part of, um, of what we all found yeah. out on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, when... When audiences come to Broadway, when they come to New York and see the Broadway show, mm-hmm. they sort of, um, a part of the experience is just being on Broadway. Yeah. And so that's, it's exciting to meet all of the stars and and to be a part, to be in Times Square and all of, yeah. um, everything that goes along with the storytelling. Yep. But out on the road, I, it was a slightly different experience for people who just, I think, didn't know what to expect mm. and were blown away by how easily they related to these characters yeah. and how much of themselves they saw in this story as it played out. And so what 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 we found at the stage door was that, or what I found, is that families were coming together. And, and I think a lot of the times that started because the teenagers knew the cast album, you know, mm-hmm. backward and forward. Mm-hmm. And they begged their parents to, mm-hmm. to or dragged them. Right. They all went, and then the parents were the ones who were... Um, taken by surprise yes, by right. how how connected they felt mm-hmm. to these other parents, and I had moms, moms and dads, um, at the stage door who would grab my arm and say, "I, I, you, you told my story up there," and then just would start would break down, mm. and and then they'd apologize because they didn't see those tears mm-hmm. coming. And I think, I think that was such a moving experience for me for all of us because we really saw how poignant um, this this story is for, especially for people who um, haven't had an ex- a lot of experience seeing uh, live productions. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I first heard of you because our mutual friend, Matt Trish, shout out to Matt Hi, Trish. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt Trish. Uh, he was like, oh my God, my friend is going on to Scarlet Pimpernel. Right? Oh, right. That was your, wasn't that your first that Broadway That was my show? debut, yeah. Yeah, and you were like in the ensemble, but you covered the lead. Yeah. Right? I, yeah, so I, I just told this story, actually. I was, I, I was, my Broadway debut, I was hired to be, I went into Sutton Foster's track, okay. the one that she right. originated in the ensemble. And then six weeks later, our the Scarlet Pimpernel was bought out by mm-hmm. new producers. Right. And then... Um, we went back into rehearsal. Yeah, there was like a crazy history for the kids that weren't around. Then. Yeah, Scott Pimpernel had a weird. Yeah, it was, but there were there were ultimately three versions of yeah. this show <laughs> right. on Broadway, right. all on Broadway, yeah. and and offs because we we took it out of town for a couple of months and mm-hmm. then came back, moved mm-hmm. into the Neil Simon. It was nuts, but I came in in version one, and then six weeks later went into rehearsal. Where did Sun Foster go to do two. Annie or something? Uh, I think that was she might have been doing Millie on the road. Oh, uh, okay, went. okay, uh huh. I don't remember. Right, right, right. Okay. I'll have to ask her. <laughs> um, but version two, in version two, then they asked me to cover the the leading ladies, and I was I don't know twenty three, and um, was pretty green, and that was super exciting and very very scary. Yeah, what was it like to? I, I actually don't know that that doesn't happen that often that Mm-mm. someone that young gets to cover a role like that. I know as their first thing. Yeah, what, I know. Do you know. remember the first time you went on? Is it? Still oh, the I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. I mean, thankfully, I felt very prepared. A lot uh-huh. of times, you know, understudies just get thrown on. They haven't had a put in. They yeah. haven't. They don't even have costumes. Mm-hmm. We hear those stories a lot, um, and that certainly happened to me at next to normal, but. For Pimpernel, I was I was well rehearsed. I was prepared. I had just had an understudy rehearsal, so I think it was a Thursday, uh-huh. and I left the rehearsal. And my stage manager called and said, "You're on. You're back." Get and I back was like, here. "Okay." <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I I think uh, I I remember this moment of the curtain going up and like this character starts alone on stage in a pool of light and and you know a little piano and starts singing mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden i was like i'm out of here like i am not staying here i got 2000 people looking mm-hmm. at me and i <laughs> i'm going to pee my pants so <laughs> i'm just going to and um you know i had this like 
this internal dialogue going on, like, mm -hmm. you know, t uh, having, having, trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself. So uh, I, I eventually talked myself off the ledge and said, I wow. you know, just stop it right now and you know what you're doing and just do it. And then, and then everything else after that was pretty smooth. But yeah, it was a pretty strong fight or flight. Wow. Re response yeah. and I just had to work my way through it. To stay you know? there and power belt those yeah. like wild horn songs. <laughs> I know. I had know. you been like do, doing big singing since you were like, would you do it like in high school and playing like the big leads in the musicals? And... You no, know, I don't know. I think I sort of uh, found myself there. Uh -huh. Like I, I was, I was a dancer as as a young okay. person, Primarily and then. Dance. And then I started uh, taking voice lessons, and then I started doing the like state choir, mm -hmm. okay. regional choir uh -huh. kind of route. Mm -hmm. So I was doing more traditional uh, song work. Hmm. And then, and then my mom said, "Oh, you should audition for the play." And I thought, "Oh, that sounds kind of fun." And so then I started doing straight plays. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, uh, it was my mom actually who said, um, "You know, if you..." Uh, if you do a musical, you get to combine your your dance skills, your like. singing skills, <laughs> and your acting skills. And I was like, musicals are dumb. I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's silly, mom. And then, uh, anyway, she was right. Wow. She was right, and I had you know I had a great time, and I and I figured out how to um, sort of um, find my way through yeah. tough times in my youth, like people making fun of my lips. Right. Full lips on Broadway, where she should be. <laughs> uh, and then next to normal was such a big deal, right? You yeah. covered Diana, but you, yeah. you went on a bunch in that, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I did. And then some of it, did you do one of some of those like Act Two only? Uh, nights, only or? once, actually. Okay, once. I uh -huh. only did Act Two one time. <laughs> no, but I mean that's a, that's a killer role. I mean oh it's God, it's huge. it is it is like a freight train. Would you play that role again? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, I think. <laughs> you know, a decade later, I'd have something else to offer. Yeah, sure. But um, I like the way they did it in DC, which is just a week of mm. performances. You know, that just <laughs> seems a lot more palatable. And I think it really just has to do with the, you know, with the vocal demands in the same way that, you know, that Ev our Evans, mm -hmm. it's not safe to, to yeah. be doing two shows a day. Right. From a vocal perspective, right. and and it makes sense for the storytelling and for everyone on stage mm -hmm. to, you know, to have uh, lots of terrific actors in that mm -hmm. role. And uh, you know, Diana is a similar kind of, uh, you know, tough tough machine there. So. I think a slightly easier role was your super fun role in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Yeah. <laughs> You were like the cool mom in the casino, right? That was you. I was, yeah. and a koala. Oh right. So, okay. I was trying to think of like what your please, craziest character, what yes, your craziest costume let's, was. Let's in get Priscilla. the entire resume in there. I miss Priscilla. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those fun. shows where I was like, that I was wish really it was fun. just running so I could just like go see it tonight. Yeah. For fun. It was fun. We had a lot of fans like that. Yeah. It just it was such like just vacuous escapism, and yeah. and it was really great and everybody and it was great and we couldn't help but have a good time and literally everyone was running for the as the minute the curtain opened to the minute it came down like we were doing quick changes while still singing you know backup right. uh, vocals off stage I mean wow. we were just running yeah. and uh, and and it and I that was a like kind of a dark period in my life mm -hmm. so to go to work and to have this really fun mm. sparkly happy Escapism. show that clearly brought joy to the audience and the stage door was always just a happy place yeah. people dressed and right. wearing their <laughs> lashes and it was so fun yeah that was that was uh that was great that was really great and a crazy score just last week i was out and t and they were playing it's raining men i was like has this song ever been on broadway and i was like of course it was oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what other show would have it's raining yeah. men on it of uh, course with people flying in you know what were they wearing that had wings on i don't know it was, it was like nutty bad. it was Epic. Yeah, I wish was that, really why fun. wasn't that taped for Netflix? Oh, I would yeah. like to watch that tonight. Thank you. Send me yes. your bootlegs. <laughs> Sorry, I can't encourage bootlegs. Yes. Um, so, hey, Lindsay, hey. what are the people online You're asking obsessed. Jessica Phillips? Full They're... lips on Broadway. Yes, girl, I wish I had those lips. All right, <laughs> Natalia <laughs> wants to know, who is your dream person to play your mom on stage? Oh. Oh, what a great question. Is that good one? 
icons you could choose from. So I know. Better. I mean, does it have? Or it could, doesn't have, it could not be age appropriate. It could be like someone. It could be flashbacks. Anyone. I don't know. It could be yeah. anything. Just yeah. I, I don't mean to add any. You know what? I have context. to say, I um, uh, you know, New York Theater Workshop right now is doing a production of Unknown Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. And I I did this uh, up at Williamstown a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh -huh. And I did it with Estelle Parsons because she was in that production as well. Uh -huh. And she pretty much is like Estelle Parsons. She's it. Wow. She's she did icon. not play my mom in that production, but had she, that uh, probably would have so been you, would, a would you, in, in your In your fantasy bio musical starring yourself, playing mm -hmm. yourself, would you would be in it with her? Yeah. Into that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in it with, uh, with Estelle as my mom. She's a legend. She really is. Yeah. I mean, she's remarkable and she's so bright. And did you know she started, did you know she started in politics? No. Really? Yeah. Well. You should have her on the show. Okay. Come on, Estelle Parsons. <laughs> yeah. We always accept she's legends. She's amazing. Was you, were you intimidated to meet her? Because oh, she's, she's hell intimidating. Yeah. She is so intimidating. <laughs> and we shared a dressing room that oh. was like the size of this desk. <laughs> and, you know, and she'd be in there with her newspapers, and, you know, I would just try not to take up too much space. <laughs> right, she I'll just was, be here. Oh, she, yeah. She's really smart, re really bright. Cool. <laughs> amazing. Um, I think we have time for one more lucky yeah. fan question. Ava wants to know, what has this role taught you most about yourself? Mm. Oh. Uh, I, I think I'd have to say that when opening myself up to Heidi's failures, I gave myself an opportunity to... Um, give myself the same permission that, mm. you know, I think, I think many of us fall into the trap of wanting to sort of appear that we have it together right. or put out there right. that we're, we're getting things right. Mm -hmm. We're getting it right. We know how to, uh, to move through the world without, without making mistakes. Um, Social media has actually made that even more confusing. That's exactly so right. Like, like all of this cur persona. The curated stuff that yeah. we see online and, and we know that it's not real and yet we continue to participate right. because <laughs> right. um, we feel like we, we don't have much other choice. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think for me, I, I, her, Heidi is so all over the emotional map. Mm. You know, she is, pardon the pun, but <laughs> I mean, she really, you know, she's a pendulum and she, mm -hmm. she, uh, she is manic in some way in terms of the way she approaches her parenting because it's all coming from this place of wanting mm. to do what's best for her kid. And that's what makes that final scene so poignant is yeah. that the pendulum stops and she's able to sort of just look at him and say, I don't have to do anything in this moment. I just need to tell you that I'm I'm here for you mm -hmm. and I got you and we're we're going to get through this mm -hmm. even though it doesn't feel like that right now. Right. And um I have so much respect for that for a a woman um who, you know, a fictional woman who yeah. is able uh to get herself together in in such a spectacular way to be there for her kid. And it allows me to reflect more on my own authenticity, my accessibility, my vulnerability, um, both you know in my private life and in my public persona, and say, yeah, it's it's really okay to not have it all together mm -hmm. because most of us most of us don't. It's a it's it's about figuring it out as we go along mm -hmm. and learning from mistakes, failing forward, growing from from those failures and and Heidi does that so so beautifully that that's absolutely something that I learned from from her. Well said. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I learned from Heidi too. <laughs> and, that's it. and Jessica. Hey everyone, go see Jessica Phillips in Dear Van Hansen at the Music Box Theater. It's Phillips on B Way. I don't want you to type out the full word. It's Phillips on B Way. Yeah. Right? Okay. It is. Yeah. It, yeah. Curated content. That's it. <laughs> and some real stuff. Some real stuff. <laughs> I think so. 
<laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Good to see you. Hey, me. Lindsay, why don't you oh, take us out? Oh, so sad to, but I will. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook, and you can listen to us wherever you get those podcasts by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button, y'all. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Mark Cruciat and Kevin Zambrano, who are making their Broadway debuts in West Side Story.